You know, it's my experience that lakes have a personality. And that becomes really evident with crappie fishing, above all else. Some lakes you can go out and throw artificial lures and do really well with crappie. Um, some you can't. This is one of those lakes that really doesn't fish artificial lures for crappie very well. I'm at Green Valley, it's in West Terre Haute, Indiana, and it's a crappie and largemouth bass lake. But what does really well for the crappie here is live minnows. So I got a big bucket of live minnows, I got my kayak, and I'm gonna head out and see if I can get, if I'm lucky enough to get a limit, I'll be absolutely ecstatic. Truthfully, I'll just be happy getting a, a nice handful of crappie I can take home have for dinner with the kids and family tonight. Um, I'm just gonna use slip bobbers. Um, got my pole set up with a 20 pound, or no, I'm sorry, 10 pound fire line. And uh, that's just what I'm gonna be trying today. The weather is absolutely gorgeous today for crappie fishing. I got a big front coming in, cloud cover all over the place. The lake is cooling down, and from what I've heard, it's been on fire here lately. But anyway, enough talking. Let's get out here and go fishing. I've shared this trick in a previous video. This is uh, how I hang on to my, uh, my catch. And this works better and faster than any other method out there. Uh, works great for bluegill. I'm gonna try it out for crappie today. But just a little water in the bucket, stick it right behind you up here in the kayak and just toss your fish in. This lid has a little bit of a kind of a fan cut around it so the fish can't jump back out. We're gonna have a wet butt today. My upper body warm, I think I'll be all right. I do have rain pants, but I decided not to wear them. I may regret that. been a hard fought first fish but I finally brought one in I got soaked I've been out here for probably um, I don't know two hours and that's the first fish I got but still got a first fish so he's going in the bucket and we'll go back and try that spot again I just cast this fallen tree over here That's the kind of crappie I came here looking for. Yes. Sorry about this lens. There just isn't much I can do about it. It's very soft. Business now. He's 
little guy. There you go, pal. There we go. Look at this one. That's getting nice. This is a good eating size crappie right here. Another one. Got another nice eater here. Their bite has been very gentle today. It's almost like ice fishing where you uh, you don't have much of a hit at all and the fight's not real strong, but hey, that's not what we're here for. We just want to get some fish. <laughs> He's going in the bucket. I've got my slip bobber set up at about two and a half to three feet of depth. I'm just kind of plunking it up here right in this brush and then I'm making these tiny little jigging tugs. Like I'll let it sit there the current will jig it just a little bit, but then every now and then I just lift it. And there was a fish. <laughs> if you kayak fish, especially in cool weather, here's a little trick. If you've got a cup holder in front of you, just a little bit of water in there, toss a handful of your minnows in, and then you don't have to reach back into your minnow bucket quite as often. He's the bottom end to eat in size, but once you're cleaning fish, you might as well clean a lot of fish. I, I like to hook minnows through the lips when I'm casting a distance away um, and I can retrieve them. But with the lip hook, I don't think they have a tendency to thrash around as much. So when I have a bobber and I'm sitting uh, vertically jigging like this, I, then I'm gonna go through the tail a lot more often like and that's what I've been doing here I think the tail hook has a tendency to make the minnow want to thrash around a little bit more Like they're being caught by something on their rear end so they keep thrashing and it's real effective in these brush piles uh, The lip hook much better when you're retrieving the, uh, the, the bait because it actually kind of acts like a lure then a lot of times I find crappie like to end up hanging around these brush piles that are younger like a tree that's fallen and still has a lot of the small uh, sticks and leaves on it. I'd call it more like brush. Whereas when you get the older trees where all the brush has fallen to the bottom, they, they don't tend to congregate around that structure as much. Another little guy. We just let him go. I'll tell you what, this is pretty stinking easy. I put in a lot of work finding where these fish are today. And to be honest with you, I was not feeling like coming back out when I got back in the truck and dried off. But I am so glad I did right now because I am just sitting here reaping the benefits. I fished all down this wall, several different spots, checking different depths. 
every which way. And now I'm just sitting here plunking them right off this brush pile. It's freaking great. Oh yeah, man, that's a gorgeous crop you did. Nice haul. You guys having a fish fry tonight? I don't know about the knot. <laughs> Biggest crop I ever caught in my life come out of here and I was bass fishing. Yeah. I'm lipless crankbait today. Yeah. It was uh, 18 inches. I throw a lot of lipless in the river if I'm gonna throw lures. I, I throw a, for a saw guy and... Well, that's it for me today. Ended up doing pretty good. I don't know, I think I ended up with six crappie in the bucket. So I'm gonna go home, clean them up, uh, maybe watch the last half of the Colts game. Thanks for coming along. Have a great day.